Hey guys, now as we gear up for the pond hockey season, or in a couple of really lucky cases that season is already here, what I wanted to use this video for was to go through a list of my, I guess you could say, essential pond hockey items. Now, whether I'm gonna be playing on ODRs in the UK or heading out to Sweden or Finland for proper pond hockey, this is a list of my must-have or my pond hockey essentials for this time of year. Now, of course, this is gonna exclude the most obvious things like your skates, your stick, your gloves, maybe your helmet, but these are the essential things that I always like to make sure that I have with me when I'm playing ice hockey outside. Let's take a look. Now the first and at the top of the list of all of the things that I need to make sure I have with me for the pond hockey season is gonna be the Pacific Rink Pond Pack. Now, I'm sure you guys have come across this bag before. We've done a couple of other videos on it in the past, but this is without a question of a doubt, the most efficient and the most effective bag to have with you for the pond hockey season. Now, not only is it a head turner, not only do people constantly ask me questions about where I've gotten it from, especially over here in Europe, but it has enough space and it's geared up to fit everything that you need for pond hockey perfectly. The fact that it has two dedicated slots for your skates to go into and then an actual massive storage section in the middle with lots of accessory pockets means that it's super easy to be able to take all your must-have items with you to the pond. Of course, this bag has a lot of other practical uses like for referees, coaches, but for the ODR season, this bag is honestly flawless. Now from there, it's gonna be something that's not as obvious as you might think, and that's gonna be lip balm. I remember the first time I played on an outdoor pond and that was in Finland, it was minus 19 degrees Celsius and we played out from sunrise until sunset. I have never ever had my lips shredded so bad. It felt like I'd run them through a cheese grater or something because it's just so cold, the air is so dry. And having lip balm, as simple as it sounds, means that you're gonna save yourself a lot of irritation and honestly, what can result in sometimes pain while you're playing outside. So lip balm is hands down a must have for the pond hockey season. Now from there, it's gonna be something to look after your skate blades. Now notoriously, if you're playing on ponds, if you're playing on sea ice and some ODRs, the ice can be less than desirable, which means that you're gonna be chewing through your runners or needing to get them sharpened much quicker than you normally would if you were playing indoors with much more consistent conditions. Now what I like to have with me is two things. One of those things is a Y stick, which is kind of like my last resort. I know I'm gonna regret using it later, but it fixes your edges well enough to be able to get onto the ice and play. Now, if I've got a bit more time, or if I'm gonna be getting my blades ready, say the day before, the night before, or if I'm gonna be taking a break and I have some time to touch my blades up then, I'm gonna be using the Blade Barber, which is a handheld skate sharpener. Now, this isn't like a lot of the devices that you see um, in hockey in general, which are kind of edge extenders or edge life extenders, which essentially help you to get a little bit more life out of your edges and kind of extend the time period it takes for you to be able to go to the pro shop to get your skates sharpened. Now, the Blade Barber isn't like that. It's not an edge life extender. It's a full skate blade sharpener. This is actually taking a significant amount of material off of your runners. In other words, sharpening them. You can choose depending on what type of a hollow you have, if it's a 5.8, if it's a half inch. They have lots of different options to accommodate different playing styles and different preferences. But this is, without a shadow of the doubt, one of the must-have items I need to have inside my bag because if I lose an edge, I know that I can fix the edge properly. Whether I'm sat next to the pond or if I'm back at the hotel, I'm able to fix my skate edges quickly and easily. This is a couple of pointers I picked up from Finland. While we were skating on what I could only imagine was during the summertime an athletics field that gets flooded over and turned into an ice rink over the winter time. So the great thing about this spot is that it had locker rooms so you could actually sit down somewhere warm and get ready, get dressed. I noticed a guy in the locker room using bits of insulation and foam and placing them underneath his footbeds over the holes of his skates. He also used a bit of tape, I think it was some masking tape or duct tape, and covered the perforations or holes at the bottom of his skates. I didn't really get what he was doing because those holes or perforations are for moisture management. So when you're playing in rinks and you kind of like build up a sweat, your skates start to get a bit wet. Those holes are to kind of help to keep the inside of the skates as dry as they possibly can so you're not picking up any extra weight with water. But when you're on the ponds or playing outdoors, and it's very, very cold. I'm talking about say minus 10, minus 15, maybe even minus 20, and there's a little bit of wind. All those holes at the base of your skate do is just invite all of that freezing cold air into your skates. And if your feet are a little bit moist from sweating, it just means that your toes are gonna to be like bits of wood. They're gonna freeze and it's gonna be really uncomfortable. So what he was doing in the locker room was blocking those holes to keep his skates much warmer. So I definitely took that point on board and it's something that I now do when I'm playing outdoor hockey. And another point is, if you've seen a couple of videos that we've done in the past on the Powerfoot, 
which is that foam insert that sits in the inside of the toe box of the skates. It helps to minimize any negative space inside the toe box of your skates. It helps to keep your toes planted to the base of your skate. The idea behind this is that it's to help you with your quick starts and stops, your general skating, to add a little bit more power, a little bit more control over your skates, which in turn will hopefully help you to be a little bit quicker, a little bit more responsive on the ice. But what it does is it also acts as a bit of additional insulation because the entire body of your skate has padding, it has foams, except the toe box, which is just solid plastic. And that gets cold very, very quickly. So adding a little bit of insulation and also blocking the holes or perforations at the base of the skate really, really help towards being able to allow you to stay on the ice much, much longer without having to worry about your toes absolutely freezing. So that's a little trick that I now use nowadays. From there, it's gonna be some sort of leg pads because nothing sucks more than taking a stick slash to the shin when all that's there is skin and bone. It sucks, especially if you get hit freakishly in the same spot twice, which has happened to me on a couple of occasions and it's really painful. Now what I do is, if you remember a few months back, we looked at a product called the Savior, which was a, a high ankle and Achilles tendon protector for when you're on the ice. So although this is a protective device for the back of your leg, I actually spin it round and use it for the front of my legs during pond hockey. It's the perfect size and because this is either made from really lightweight plastic or carbon fiber, it's very thin, very light, takes up minimal space inside a bag and it acts as a great shin protector. It means that if you're gonna be getting any pucks to the shins or any stick slashes to the shins, you're not gonna feel it. You can just keep your head in the game. Now, because I normally play hockey in what we call tracksuit trousers or I guess you could refer to them as sweatpants, there's not enough space inside those pants to use your normal leg guards that you use when you're on the ice. So using something that's much, much smaller, much more low profile goes a long way. Of course, there's lots of other things that you can use from perhaps different sports, just something to protect your shin, maybe your knees. I tend not to get hit in the knees, you know, pretty much any time. So it's just the shins that I'd like to try and look after, but that definitely goes a long way. Some other essential items you wanna make sure that you have is definitely gonna be a hat, a beanie, a toque, whatever you refer to it, just like this one over here. Shout out to TB12 for hooking this up. You're also gonna to wanna to have, of course, your favorite jersey. I tend to be rocking hockey tutorial jerseys pretty much any time that I'm on the ice because of course, not being biased, but that's my favorite jersey. So you wanna make sure you have one of those as well. And a couple of other items that go a really long way is a spare change of clothes and a spare set of socks because you get off the ice Typically your feet are gonna be wet. Being able to change into some nice dry socks is always gonna be a good shout. Normally when I get off the ice after I've been playing outdoors, my t-shirt is absolutely soaked. So having a spare t-shirt to change into so you're not walking around in the freezing cold with a cold wet t-shirt on, again, goes a really, really long way. And also something to sit on when you're getting changed because if you're playing on a pond, there might not be benches or anywhere to sit down to get changed. So I'll always throw a towel into my bag just to make sure I have something to be able to sit on or to be able to dry anything off that I need to dry off after I've gotten off the ice. From there, it's gonna be skaboots, which are proper walkable skate guards. What makes the skaboots so unique when compared to your traditional skate guards, which are incredibly thin, is that the skaboots feature a shoe-like sole. Now the first thing that that's gonna do is be much more comfortable to be able to walk in on a variety of different surfaces when compared to those really thin traditional skate guards that we normally get. Aside from that, it's gonna have much better stability because it has a shoe-like sole. It's much wider, so you are balanced better and you're able to walk a lot more comfortably with a lot more ease. Now what the skaboots allow us to do is get our skates ready while we're at the hotels or at our friends' houses in Finland, get into a taxi or an Uber and get to the location that we're playing pond hockey in and literally just slip them off and jump straight onto the ice. Because it has that wider shoe-like sole, it's so much easier to walk across ice, to walk across things like stairs or areas that having a very, very thin blade guard would be very difficult or even impossible to walk on. Aside from this, Skaboots also have studs that you can have in the base of the sole, so if you're walking across ice, you don't slide. These things are phenomenal for pond hockey, but they also have a lot of practical uses for your day-to-day -day tasks at the arena, if it be tournaments, training, or games. Incredibly useful. Now, second to last on the list is gonna be the same mini accessory bag that I keep inside my hockey bag. This has lots of different essentials like a bottle opener. It's also got my tape tiger to be able to quickly rip off the tape of my stick. I also have a bunch of other accessories in there that come in really, really handy for just hockey in general. So I always make sure I throw my accessory bag inside the pond pack that I'm using while I'm on the ice, just to make sure I have any of those must have items that I need that I might forget. Now last on the list is gonna be something to drink. If you're gonna be outdoors playing hockey all day, you wanna make sure you have something to drink. Now, depending on how old you are or what you like to drink, of course this list is gonna vary, but for me I normally like to make sure that I've got something hot and also a bottle of water just to make sure that I'm staying hydrated while I'm on the ice. 
As always, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully this has shared a bit of insight into what my essentials for the pond hockey season are. If there's anything that we've missed out, please comment down below and let us know what they are. And maybe you could even share in the comment section what your top 10 must have items are for the pond hockey season. But as always, thank you very much for watching this video. Be sure to thumbs up, be sure to subscribe if you're not already and turn on the bell so you can get notifications when we post new videos and I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go anywhere, somewhere along the screen and also down below and also in the card up top, there'll be the videos that we filmed when we've been in Finland, showing you some of the best outdoor rinks in Finland. And I also filmed a guide to show you guys how to head over to Finland to play pond hockey for this season if it's something that you're interested in doing. If you've never done it before, definitely give it a shout. I've got people that you can contact, the best places to stay, roughly how much you're gonna be looking at spending. It's a very comprehensive guide and I'll link it down below. Make sure you check it out. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Take care and see you soon.